Good morning. God bless you guys. Thank you for coming to Calvary Chapel Kingman today. Why don't you guys go ahead and stand up, and we are going to worship the Lord. And I want to warn you, I tried to pick a, a, a clapping song, okay? So you guys can brave it, get some clapping, get some blood flowing, and uh, praise the Lord, and uh, <coughs> let's worship. Okay, I got it. Go pop it. We get the blood flowing, right? Praise the Lord. Oh. 
we just thank you and we pray that your love would abound, that you would fill us with your spirit, Lord, as we worship. We give you the time this morning and ask that you would work on us, Lord, work on our hearts and our minds and convict us and strengthen us and heal us. And Lord, most of all, we thank you that you forgive us. Amen. Give you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat. <laughs>
Lord, that is our prayer, that you would just have your way within our hearts and that we would just come before you with all that we are, giving ourselves wholly to you. And we ask that you would work through your spirit to bring us to where you want us to be, Lord. You say that you transform us from glory to glory into your image. So we ask that you would just flood this place with your Holy Spirit this morning. And all the believers said in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Uh, we're going to have the announcements and then we'll uh, get right into the teaching. So the children, six and under, are released to their classroom and uh, we'll get going. Good morning. Yes, and we are going to have uh, a new ramp out here uh, shortly. So uh, thanks for keeping that in prayer. The Lord is a uh, blessing. And I uh, had uh, uh, busyness uh, this last week uh, putting those things in, uh, thanks to some folks there, uh, Reuben and Jack and I helped myself and Nate uh, 
So that was uh, just a, a very good, uh, exciting time, having fellowship and working together. So um, projects uh, around. And if you are into projects, um, you might uh, find out kind of what's going on around here and maybe you can volunteer. Uh, the children, or maybe you're musically inclined, you know, those kind of things. Maybe back, uh, maybe you're tech uh, inclined, or at least you can um, learn those uh, aspects of it. So uh, that's great. We're always uh, looking for folks that could help with different things. And the Lord has a place uh, for you, body of Christ. So uh, <clears throat> all right. So uh, this morning, we are in uh, the fifth chapter of uh, the book of Ephesians. And so if you would turn to chapter five <clears throat> of uh, the book of Ephesians and um, let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your uh, continual grace uh, upon our lives, Lord God. We can thank you for that uh, blessing that you put upon us and the promises that you have for us and the word that you have for our, uh, for our learning and instructions, Lord God. And so, Lord, we want to honor you today. We want to ask your uh, help and strength for us, Lord, as we, uh, as we uh, go through these areas of Scripture, that you would reveal yourself to us in these areas, Lord God. We thank you uh, that you direct us and that you have uh, a plan and purposes uh, for our lives, Lord God. And we ask that you would strengthen us, Lord, that you would... Help us as we learn uh, these things about marriage today, God. Uh, so we ask uh, your blessing upon this time. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> so we are in Ephesians uh, chapter 5 as uh, we left off in verse uh, 21. And so we went through uh, chapter 5 and uh, interesting things that were there uh, as uh, we see uh, that uh, we, uh, from chapter four, the put-offs, the put-ons, the things that we need to get rid of, the old man, and then those things that we are to put on continually doing. And so as we work through those things, uh, it uh, went through to uh, chapter five, uh, and so uh, we, sh we see some very um, serious things there for us to consider, to get rid of. And then uh, in chapter 5, uh, verse, uh, uh, actually verse 18, it tells us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so the uh, idea of being filled with the Holy Spirit uh, is uh, then given to us those things that will go on when we're filled with the Spirit of God. And uh, giving thanks always in verse 20, for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then uh, speaking to one another, as it says in verse 19, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. That's what uh, a spirit-filled life produces for us. Those things which are a blessing uh, for ourselves uh, because we experience it, but also a blessing to others as we speak to one another uh, in, in that kind of way. And so in verse 20, giving thanks for all things to the Lord. And so therefore, from that position, from that understanding of that kind of work going on in us, the put-offs and the put-ons and these kind of things that leads us to a spirit-filled life. And then all of a sudden we come to this particular place that, that uh, requires uh, or that it's better as we uh, are filled with the Spirit of God. In verse 21, it says, and submitting to one another, it says, in the fear of God. 
And so uh, submitting to one another, it's a very interesting uh, area of scripture as we consider submission to one another. Now, there's uh, many areas of scripture that we can look at as far as submitting to one another. But it's the idea of love for one another. It's the idea that God is working in our lives, that we're serving one Lord. And so, therefore, because we are, there is a unity and a love amongst God's people. And so, for me... Uh, to have grace in my life and concern and fellowship with you and one to another, there is this idea that now all of a sudden there is a common uh, uh, joy amongst us and those things that go on amongst us uh, there is not a hierarchy that is that is there, you know. In the service, if any of uh, many of you have been in the service, so you know that you know if you're a general or if you're a, a, a lieutenant or a major, this kind of thing, that those who are uh, not uh, officers, uh, they uh, are to salute. Uh, the officers, as you greet them, you're walking down the sidewalk, here comes an officer, and you salute. You know, it's that kind of thing. And so there is a hierarchy, basically. But uh, in God's kingdom, uh, the submission goes because you want to prefer one another, because there's a commonness amongst us, a commonness of love and respect for one another. So uh, someone perhaps in need, uh, oh, would you do this for me? Would you watch my dog when I'm gone? You know, uh, well, that doesn't seem much of an of a idea of submission, but it's, it's a, uh, an understanding that there's a friendship and a mutual respect for one another that you would do something like that. Or if someone is sick, uh, then there are those that get together and they bring food over for the family and that kind of thing that is going on. And so that's kind of just a mutual Christian type of, of thing that we do. And so when we start looking at submission, there is this idea of commonality and respect for one another and love for one another. And so that's uh, the idea of, of loving one another. It's uh, the idea as in Philippians 2, which uh, is verse 3, which we probably need to look at. But there is uh, an understanding that it's a preference for you because it's a respectful thing to do. And so uh, now when you, you get to other areas, obviously there is uh, rank and positions. Ba basically, we say uh, it's a position that they have. For instance, Apostle Paul. He is in a position of authority. And therefore, he, in uh, Colossians chapter 1, talks about this individual and he directs the church to do these things. So positional-wise, there is those areas uh, that are uh, headship and, and that kind of thing. Obviously, that has to be that way. Everything is not just a free-for-all and anarchy, you know, that kind of thing. So, uh, so there is that, that idea, but it's an overwhelming understanding of loving one another. And so the submission to one another is what's being said here. And so submitting to one another in the fear of God. And so the idea, the fear of God. And so God is in control. You do these things. We do these things because we have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and we want to please God. So God is telling us. I know Paul wrote the the. the area uh, or scripture in Ephesians, but he's moved by the Holy Spirit. So it's inspired by God. All scripture is inspired by God or God breathed is the 
one of the other ways of uh, saying that. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for all these kind of things that the Lord uh, uh, says in his word. Profitable for correction, reproof, training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So uh, we see uh, just a common sense type of, of a thing. It's, uh, it's the idea of loving one another without um, the idea, the fact that someone is over us and we do it because uh, now we have to. We do it because we love one another. We submit to one another because we want to, because we, uh, we want to please the Lord also. So submitting to one another in the fear of God and so from that, there is direction on how to do that. And so the first part of this, talking about the husband and wife's relationship, submitting to one another. Wives, in verse uh, 22, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. <clears throat> so, we're talking about the, re, uh, the marriage relationship. And so, that's an easy peasy one, right? I mean, we just, okay, we got it wired, right? No, we don't have that wired. <laughs> I don't have it wired, you know. <laughs> so it's continual work and uh, continual understanding of, of God's direction and his love uh, for us. And so uh, here, as, uh, as we look at the wife uh, being um, submitting uh, to, uh, to the husband. And so uh, there is uh, an equality it, uh, there is an equality of the husband and the wife. Uh, and in our present day, we see uh, that this is a subject that is uh, not really readily taken in by many today. And so, uh, however, the, the Lord says what he says. And so, as uh, I quoted the uh, scripture, all scripture is uh, given by inspiration of God. And so, therefore, we should take those things uh, that he says to us and uh, understand them that God knows uh, best. And so, therefore, we are ready to accept that in this area. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's all areas, right? In everything. We uh, accept God's direction on everything. So whenever God speaks on different things, a subject uh, in any kind of uh, area, then we need to understand that it's God is speaking on these things. And remember, it is uh, Paul being moved by the Holy Spirit to write these things down. Paul gets a bad rap. And uh, I, I've had people come up and say, well, if it wasn't for Paul, you know, women could do this or that and all that. But it's Paul's idea. It's not Paul's idea. Blame it on God and then accept it. <laughs> it's God. Oh, you know, okay, you know. So you're going to contradict what God has to say? You're not pleased with that? Really? Then you've got a bigger problem. You know, so uh, it's, it's just how... Uh, the Lord uh, knows what's best and he knows that we uh, need these uh, directions. And so he gives them uh, to us and we say praise God for that. So uh, just through the plain teaching of the word of God, that's what we need uh, to look at in these, uh, in these areas. And so uh, it says here that um, wives submit to your own husbands. And therefore, uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, ideas about 
husbands and wives, but God has the final word on it. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 16, the woman, to the woman, he said, God said, I will greatly multiply your sorrows and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Those, uh, that was in the very beginning. We know that, uh, in fact, it goes back to the beginning, and it goes back for the most part because Adam was uh, created first. Adam was the one that was first created, and so that's why the man is the head of the house, uh, and therefore uh, Eve uh, kind of overstepped uh, her bounds and um, took of uh, the fruit of the tree, and she was deceived. Now, Adam ate it too. Shame on him, right? I mean, he's just as guilty, right? Well, uh, the difference here is that the woman was deceived. The man was not deceived. It didn't say that the man was deceived. And so uh, there, there's a difference in God's economy for that. So God, even though uh, there were uh, repercussions, uh, yet uh, it was uh, the woman who was deceived. The man was not. So therefore, Adam ate the uh, forbidden fruit by his own choice. Their eyes were opened. Uh, and so uh, therefore, uh, that's what we see in the scriptures. That's the, that's the commentary on uh, that in the New Testament about what had happened. And so, therefore, uh, the wife is submit to your own husband as to the Lord. Now, it's, uh, it, it's going to say in verse um, uh, 24, it says, uh, and so wives... Uh, are to submit uh, uh, in their own, to their own husbands in everything. But every time you see that in an understanding that is it, it's as unto the Lord that these things are to take place. First of all, um, if uh, the husband asks the wife to do something uh, against the law, well, that's not as to the Lord. So therefore, uh, no, sorry won't do that, can't do that. Lord says no. These kind of things. So the Lord still governs these things. The scriptures are the final authority. God is the final authority and therefore the scriptures written by the Holy Spirit. So God is the authority on these things. And so if, uh, if there comes up those kind of questions, because you're always asked those questions. Oh, what if my husband asked me, you know, to do this or that or whatever? Yeah. It's as unto the Lord. It's not just anything that uh, he wants uh, to happen. And so, therefore, uh, he's uh, under a, 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 the same understanding as that God is the one that is uh, directing uh, your husband to if he's a believer. For the husband is the head of the wife. Now, notice how that says that. The husband, maybe, he says... It says the husband is the head of the wife. The husband is. It doesn't give any wiggle room there for a, a question. It doesn't ask a question. It just says, uh, again, the husband is, is uh, the head of the wife as Christ is head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the, husband, uh, let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. And so uh, that uh, the Lord knows how uh, to run a home. The Lord knows what needs to take place in that home. He knows uh, who should be the one that is the headship over the home. And so therefore he's chosen the man to do that and the wife to submit to uh, to the husband. Verse uh, 25, husband, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. So uh, in the same way, 
it, it says, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. And it's going to describe how Christ loved the church. This is quite a sacrificial uh, way that we are to be treating our wives, guys. That we are to treat them the same way that the Lord is treating the church. He gave himself for her. And so uh, in verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word. And so that word that is being, uh, that is cleansing, that uh, idea of, of the sanctification process that is taking place and that the husband and the wife, uh, as they understand the word of God, as they read the word of God, as they uh, are, uh, are praying together and seeking the Lord together, that there is a cleansing thing that is taking place within their own hearts. And so <clears throat> he might sanctify and cleanse her, it says, with the washing of the water. And it's the washing of the water by the word. The word of God has that cleansing effect uh, upon a heart. As we uh, go through the word, as I, I've said many times, if you just read the word of God, it is a powerful scrubbing agent. I mean, it is a cleanser. And so therefore, we need cleansers these days and we need the cleansing uh, our hearts uh, as uh, more than we need cleansing of our hands and our bodies. So we need to have the word of God going through us and getting into our minds that we may understand uh, uh, the word of God, that we may have that cleansing uh, going on within, within us. And so you might sanctify that sanctification process that, that takes place in the cleansing and the washing of uh, the water of the word. And so in verse 27, that he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she should be holy and without blemish. And so there is this process on a, on a regular basis taking place. It's a regular cleansing in those little areas that maybe uh, there's those things that are, have been seething there for quite some time. And so those things that can be cleansed out of our minds and maybe resentment for one another or you got uh, some uh, issues that are unresolved and that uh, the word of God is there and is going to be cleansing those areas, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But she should be holy and without blemish. Verse 28, so husbands ought to... Uh, to love their own wives as their own bodies. So uh, he who loves his wife loves himself. And so uh, therefore to be able to, to love uh, your wife in such a way as Christ loved the church uh, to, uh, to do as it says in verse um, 28, ought to love their own wives. And so therefore there is this idea of taking care of, thinking of uh, your wife. And uh, I know that um, I know that I need to do that on a regular basis. I need to do that uh, in ways that I really haven't done before. So for me, it's kind of a, an idea of, of this working into uh, my routine, you might say, my, li my way of, of uh, dealing with my wife in a more personal way. No, she's right back there, so I can say these things. So <laughs> she can shut me off and say, you know, okay, yeah, don't say any more, you know. <laughs> okay, you know, I better uh, move along. So in verse uh, 29, uh, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. And so, uh, interesting uh, area of scripture here, for no one ever hated his own flesh in verse uh, 29. Uh, and so, interesting uh, about that, no one ever hated his own flesh. And we hear that all the time uh, about uh, people hating 
their flesh. But uh, we actually love ourselves, and it's more in the idea of thinking highly of ourselves. But this uh, tells us here uh, uh, that we need to be careful, that we need to nourish and cherish. Uh, we do nourish and cherish our own body. So likewise, uh, you need to nurture and cherish your, your wives also, because the Lord, it says, just as the Lord does the church. The Lord, you, you realize he provides everything for us. He provides forgiveness of sin. He provides uh, the idea that we have a plan. We have it written down in, in the word of God that that's our plan, that's our instruction book. He gives us something to do every day of our lives. And uh, that is, first of all, to read uh, the word. And second of all, we need to continually pray and, and ask the Lord's guidance and direction uh, in our lives. He's given us these precious promises that we may live by them and uh, be directed by them. And so he gives us an amazing uh, commandment he gives us something to do in case we don't have anything to do. Uh, in fact, we ought to make it something that we do. And that says, therefore, go and make disciples. And therefore, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I'll be with you always. And so we're to teach them all that he has commanded us uh, to do. And so, therefore, we've always had, we always have something uh, to do, and he's provided that for us. And in verse uh, 30, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Now, uh, interesting how Paul gets carried away in this area. Um, he kind of goes off into another area of, uh, of direction. Uh, it, it's like he starts saying how wonderful the Lord is, and then uh, he comes back to his uh, understand to help us to understand the things about the marriage. And one uh, individual said, "Paul gets way distracted here." One guy I was reading, he said he gets way distracted. He goes off on a rabbit trail and all that. But I don't think it's that far of a, a, a rabbit trail. But he's giving directions for us about the marriage, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bone. That's who we are. We are members of his body. We are members of who he is. We're, uh, he's our, our father. He's the one that uh, saved our soul. And so therefore, uh, Paul is, is letting them know these things, that how great the Lord is in the midst of the married relationship. In the midst of that marriage relationship, the Lord is uh, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's over all these things. And therefore, we can have that relationship. And as we're both worshiping the Lord, as we're uh, husband and wife have uh, committed their lives to God, then there will be that uh, direction and growth towards uh, towards the things of God, and therefore uh, our relationship will be certainly something uh, that uh, is a blessing. Uh, for this reason, verse 31, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So uh, the idea of leaving and cleaving, it tells us that in Genesis uh, it tells us that here a man shall uh, be committed to his wife and his wife committed to the husband. And so uh, the, for this reason, it says, and so therefore um, the, the direction in the marriage relationship and that ceremony that you have uh, when you get married, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and now you're separated unto each other, and that uh, is uh, a separation that needs to, to be uh, something uh, that is forever. And so it's not a social convenience nor simply uh, an invention uh, for living together. It is ordained by God, and it's a covenant uh, of uh, companionship to one another and uh, a mutual complement to one another, 
there is this complement that you have uh, to uh, each other. And so uh, uh, it, it's a means that set each, uh, set each other apart for each other. And so a physical, for a physical relationship for one another, but it's also the complement and the companionship uh, for one another. Your wife or your husband should be your best friends, and therefore it should be something that is permanent. It's a covenant. It's uh, the idea that, uh, that you have uh, before the Lord, asked the Lord uh, blessing upon, and he has brought that together. It's, a, it's, a, um, uh, it's something that is created by God. It wasn't created by man. And so, um, and so if, if we're married, God's word instructs uh, each of us to uh, love your spouse. And uh, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, <clears throat> you have uh, already been enabled to do so. Um, Romans 5, 5 tells us that the love of God has been poured out into our hearts. So therefore, we have the ability to love one another. And so many times there's, there's problems uh, in the marriages, but someone might say something like, you know, you, you give them the advice, you give them the uh, direction here from God's word. Yeah, but you don't know my wife, you know. <laughs> no, but you don't know my husband. You know, that's just not me. I just cannot do that. You ever heard those kind of things? I'm sure. Um, well, uh, the Lord has enabled you to do that. The Lord has enabled you and me to love our spouse. He's enabled us to do that. The question is, are you going to obey the Lord or not? Now, you know, it's it, it, the idea of, well, that's just not me. That's just not who I am. No, it's not. That You need to change. Uh, your heart needs to change. Your attitude needs to change. You know, these kind of things. Uh, God comes into a life. He comes into two people's lives. Here they are, right? Mrs. Smith and Mr. Jones. And they say, we want to get married. Okay, let's get married. And here you go. You get married. And there's two people who have completely uh, lived individual lives uh, away from uh, you, uh, away from each other. And so, therefore, uh, you think they're going to have everything right together right away? No. <laughs> you know, well, I just don't like the, the dishes being placed in the sink. Well, I don't like this. I don't, you know, it's different things. You get married and there you go. You know, it, it's, uh, it, that's, uh, that's the Lord able to work in each individual uh, to work those areas out to where you're one, uh, one in the Lord. And so therefore, uh, the rest of the, the scriptures, you know, what's amazing, there's not very many verses that deal with a marriage relationship. I think I've got a few of them down here, but there's just not many verses. There might be 10, 12 verses have to do with the marriage relationship. That's all. Really. Why? Well, because everything else in the book is instructions for us too. Everything else in this book that we are to obey. So basically, for a marriage relationship, you've got those plus this. Well, those are in here, but, but what I'm saying is, it's not just these few. It's the idea of being kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. That doesn't say it's for the marriage relationship, but it is. It's for you and somebody else. Uh, and each one of us need to, to understand those kind of things. So yes, the, the marriage can be hard. Actually, without the Lord, it's almost impossible, especially today. 
So we need a relationship with the Lord. We need to understand uh, that God is uh, directing our lives. He has a plan for us. He has the strength for us uh, to to go through these hard times, these problems uh, in our lives. And so uh, the Lord is able to work in the midst of those things. And so we can come up with a lot of excuses, a lot of uh, things, but yet God is at work. And so uh, he is uh, the one that is directing us in all these uh, things. And so <clears throat> he knows how uh, to provide. He knows how to work through uh, areas uh, in our lives. So, um, so in verse 32, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. This is a great mystery. He's uh, talking about the church and the Lord. Interesting about this. In the Old Testament, the Lord speaks about the church and, and him, um, talks about his people as the bride of Christ. The, in the New Testament, that we are espoused to one a husband that is Christ. And so in every area, wherever the, it speaks about uh, his people and him, he talks in that way of it being a marriage relationship. So a closeness that the Lord wants with us, that he has with us. That's an understanding that we need to understand that we need to, to have him as our Lord, as our Savior, the one that loves us uh, amazingly. And so the problems and difficulties in, in our marriage, he is able to take care of those things. That he, the Lord is able to direct our lives. He's given us his word and saying that, uh, that he is able uh, to do these things. Now in verse 33... Nevertheless, let uh, each of you, in particular, so love his own wife as himself, and let his wife, let the wife see that she respects her husband. And so, I, I hear, uh, in fact, one of the commentaries I was reading about this says, you know why they did that, right? Because... It's really hard for a man to love his wife, and it's really hard for a woman to respect her husband. <laughs> well, I, I mean, that may be the case at some point, but um, it's simply uh, put, let each one of you in particular, we're commanded to love our wife. We're commanded to love our husbands, you know, these kind of things. So each one is supposed to, uh, in submitting ourselves to one another uh, out of reverence for Christ, each one of us is supposed to, to be loving each other. And so it should be going like this. Well, as we're obeying and, act, and uh, worshiping the Lord, we are growing closer. And then that love, no matter it's, if it's the, the husband or no matter if it's the wife, it's the idea that we're growing together and loving one another and the idea of uh, respecting each other. And so that's uh, the direction I think that the Lord would have for us, uh, okay? And he puts it in that kind of uh, terms, uh, but the idea is for us to love one another in, in other areas, it certainly says that, and that we are to respect each other also. So uh, direction for marriage, the Lord has it. If we want the final authority on things, the Lord has it. It's just in, it's a, a, a wealth of, of jewels as far as direction for a husband and wife in the scriptures. So, first of all, submitting to one another uh, out of reverence for Christ. And so as we submit to one another, the wife submits to her husband. And by the way, that submission goes from the husband to the wife also. That, you notice that verse 21, and obviously in other areas, uh, the husband is submit to the wife also. Did, did you notice how that cross is that way? Yeah, 
So it's not just the idea of, okay, wife, go submit. It's husband, yeah, you need to go submit too. And uh, preferring one another. And so uh, after, uh, before we close, I mentioned going to uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. It says, uh, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. That's a great verse, but it's not the right one. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that was chapter one. Chapter two, verse three, it says, now, now listen to this, folks. This is not in the context of a husband and wife. But it is, because remember, it's for all the scriptures are for each, uh, each of us. But let's get the context. Let's, let's go to verse 1. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one account, Accord, pardon me, and one mind. And then in verse 3, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others. I can't read that. I, I can't read better than himself uh, because that's, that puts me uh, in the uh, idea that I owe you. You see, that's, that's one to another. That's not just a husband to the wife or the wife to the husband. And that's me to you as a believer in Jesus Christ. It says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Doesn't sound like I'm the general in here, you know. Um, but let each esteem others better than himself. Better than himself. Better than himself. I mean, that's an amazing, amazing verse. He said, and then in verse 4, it says, let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also the interest of others. That's a life verse for us as believers. That's something that we always need to keep uh, close to us and understanding that, you know what, uh, this is the way as a believer I should be thinking in lowliness of mind, first of all, without conceit, without thinking I'm any better than anybody else. You know, like the Lord thinks. <laughs> You're not better than anybody else. Oh my goodness, who are we trying to kid if you do think that? So, uh, so we need to look out not only for uh, our own, but also look out for the interest of others. So, um, wives submit as unto the Lord, to your husband. And husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Let's close in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you that you're sufficient for uh, our, uh, our life, Lord God, you're sufficient for our daily bread. We want that uh, food from you, God. We want that uh, understanding that only you can give to us. And Lord, you're the one that uh, puts the marriage relationship together. You're the one that keeps it together. So Lord, we uh, ask your help and understanding uh, in how to live with one another, Lord God, with the understanding of how to please you. So, Lord, that's our desire today. Uh, we see your word. We understand uh, that uh, it, it's all possible uh, through you, God. So we uh, want to be those who would uh, understand your word and live close to you, God. And, Lord, we do pray for the marriages today. We pray for each one uh, that uh, is married and they're in strengthening them, Lord God, that uh, we would have an attitude of uh, uh, gratitude and, and thanking you for uh, the uh, spouse that you gave us, Lord God, 
We just thank you uh, for your grace today and your word to us. And Lord, I, I pray for, for those this, uh, this morning, perhaps they, they don't know you, God. I pray that there would be decisions for you, God, today. I pray that uh, if there's anyone in here, you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you want to, you need to know him today. You need to, to uh, reach out and ask Jesus Christ, come into your life that uh, you know your, your life needs to change. You know it needs uh, him in your life. So uh, as we uh, ask today that... Uh, if, if that's you today, you don't know Christ, I'm going to ask you just to raise your hand and say, you know, that's me. Would you please pray for me today? If you don't know Christ as your Lord, as your Savior, you need to know him. There's, there's answers uh, in the scriptures. There is uh, peace in knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So if, if there's anyone here, you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to know him. Just to raise your hand and we'll pray for you. Anyone at all. Thank you, Lord. And Father, I, I thank you that you're our present help in times of trouble. And Lord, those who perhaps are, are watching uh, uh, media, Lord God, I pray that if there are, there are those that, that you know, Lord, that don't know you, that need to make that decision to follow you, God, I pray that there would be those that would uh, decide for you today. And uh, I pray, God, that they would not put it off, but they would uh, ask you to come into their life and that you would be uh, their Savior, Lord, that you'd be their Lord. And Lord, I pray your blessing upon uh, this time, Lord God, that we might be your... Uh, your people, Lord God, going out and being a witness in the community, Lord. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you would like prayer, uh, we'll be down here and we'll be available for prayer. So come on down and uh, we'll pray for you. God bless you. Let's go ahead and stand up. Jesus.
you guys for coming and worshiping us with us uh, this week. If you need prayer, don't be afraid to come down front, and uh, there's still plenty of time. And uh, may you just have a great week in the Lord.